be homosexuals. We're homosexuals, we're having a lovely time today. Laughing, singing, having fun. Because at last we're proud to say we're gay. Junk is dead, but we're alive. The movement will survive, we're fighting for liberty. Come out, come out, and join us. Sydney homosexuals, brazenly gay and yet illegal. What does Sydney think of them? Opinion polls say that 60% of people think it's time the law against gays was dropped, but that is not swaying the legislators. That is the, that is the new mood. It's the mood of ultimate toleration of everything. And the truth is, I believe, that our community muscle has gone flaccid, it's gone weak. People are resiling from a multitude of unpleasant issues that they just don't want to face up to. I have no hesitation in saying that today, as 2,000 years ago and 2,000 years uh, forward, the conduct is wrong. All this week in the city of San Francisco, athletes have been competing. Boxers, sprinters, weightlifters, men and women, and all of them homosexual. Those gay Olympics confirm San Francisco's reputation as a city where gays have gained an extraordinary economic and political clout in recent years. Not so Australia, yet. But this report for the New South Wales government claims that here, and pretty well anywhere else for that matter, every tenth person is probably homosexual. One in ten. That's a figure that will be much quoted at the annual National Conference of Australian Gays in Canberra this weekend. One of their main targets will be the state of New South Wales. In New South Wales, as in most states, the Homosexual Act is still regarded as a serious crime. The difference is that in spite of the law, Sydney is rapidly becoming, for gays, the San Francisco of the Southern Hemisphere. Now, this may be a subject which you feel that you or your children would do better to avoid. If so, please switch off now. If not, here is our report from Sydney, the golden city of the gays. Sydney has its own gay guidebook. It lists 61 homosexual groups and social clubs. There are some evenings when nearly everyone you see in this part of Oxford Street will be gay. There are gay records played for gay listeners on a gay radio show. Hi, you're on WCRFM and this is Gay Waves, Sydney's first, first gay radio program. No one knows how many listen in secret. The majority of gays are probably still hiding in that secrecy that they call the closet. But for the thousands who have come out, Sydney offers three gay newspapers and a calendar with 63 fixtures this year for gay men and lesbians. There are nine gay hotels, eight gay discos, and five bookstores. There are bizarre sex shops catering to the outer limits of sexuality. And there are 14 gay restaurants. Gays got their start in Sydney from the underworld. The sort of club owners who bribed the police to stay away saw the potential in the gay dollar and set up bars for gays. Now the gays themselves have taken over and opened places of their own. We didn't have in the city a gay-owned, gay-run hotel until we decided to open this. So we walked around town and picked one and opened the doors. 
What happened? We were mobbed. They've burst out of the closet only to find themselves in a ghetto. Their form of sex is still illegal in this state, and they know that they may be tolerated up to a point, but they're not really accepted. If you had your life again and you had a choice, would you choose to be gay or straight? At 36 years old, I don't know whether I'd know how to be straight. Uh, uh, if, I had, if I was 18 and had the choice, I don't think anyone would choose to be a minority group in society. I don't think that's... I think most people would choose to go with the majority. How many homosexuals are there? The Kinsey report found that more than a third of all men have some sex with other men as adults. A quarter of all men have three years or more of gay relationships as adults. The gays themselves say, we are everywhere. And in Sydney, they're determined to enjoy being gay. Is it easy to live a gay life in Sydney? It's not easy, but it's fun. What do you think of Australia's attitude to gays? I tend to ignore it, I think. My attitude or my father's attitude? Which is the common one, do you think? Well, my attitude is a really good one. My father's attitude is it doesn't exist. So, like, you know, um, it's coming out more and more. People are what they are, and why shouldn't they be? We're all human beings, so we're not worried. Don't worry about it. Will your father see you on television? Probably. My father doesn't know I'm gay, so I don't care. I am what I am. What they are makes them profoundly out of step with Australian ideas about manhood. There's probably no country in the world where men are brought up to be more macho than here. You've only got to look at the images that advertisers use to see that. Snowy couldn't quench. Solo. It's light on the fit, so you can slam it down fast. Solo. A man's drink. But our stereotypes <sighs> of super macho he-men can be misleading. This is part of the Australian team for the Gay Olympics. Gay athletes are probably no rarer than gay businessmen, but they tend to stay in the closet. A professional footballer who wanted to appear in this film was warned that his career would be over if he did. But there'll be no such inhibitions for Peter Todd when he goes to San Francisco to compete in the Gay Games. But why a Gay Olympics? Why well, Gay Olympics? <coughs> it's a uh, really an exercise in mass education whereby a number of very keen gay sports people were trying to help combat popular stereotypes uh, about gay people. Stereotypes like the limp wristed queen. You're a big muscular chap and you're gay. Mm -hmm. What do you think other people think of you? I guess, uh, as I said to you earlier, this is probably rather threatening for some. And one picks up cues occasionally in terms of uh, body language, it's not always verbalised that when some of these people become aware that one is gay and also very, nevertheless very much like them, this initially is very confronting until they discover you as a person, until they discover that you're a human being enjoying much the same sorts of experiences, whether in competitive sport or otherwise, uh, as they are. And then there's the possibility of some dialogue and communication the sense of being alien breaks down. Ed Ashmore knows that no gay can have real communication with anyone if he's afraid to come out and acknowledge that he is gay. He was 30 before he found the courage to come out. He didn't know that gays are everywhere. When he was a teenager and found that he fancied men more than women, he did what all gays do at first, he pretended that it wasn't true. By the time he came to Sydney, he'd tried relationships with girls 
but they hadn't been what he really wanted. But he was still afraid to be gay. I'd make a trip into town and uh, I'd heard about bars where there were puffers. All right. And I'd made very, very large metal notes about where those bars were, the places where poofters were to be found. And I went to them and was always terrified. I would walk through the bar at the Carlton Rex um, and run by the time I was out the other side. Now, quite a long bar, you know. That went on for ages. So I made contacts that were anonymous in, on beats, in parks, wherever that were unsatisfying, that were terrifying, that were um, emotionally deadening. Um, this is so it, instant sex yeah, in public lavatories. Yeah, instant sex. And it was, it was no good. Then I came back to Sydney. What did you think of yourself at that time? I hated myself. I used to go home and wash. And it was the fear of being caught, of being found out. It was continually there. Somebody is going to catch me. What's going to happen if I get caught out? I'm going to lose my job. Um, nobody's going to like me anymore. Don't Were you ever there, attacked? Yeah, I was attacked once, but it was a it was a mug rather than a than a gay attack. I was just mugged and robbed. That was pretty scary. <laughs> but Did I you go to the police? No, I didn't. No. Um, Why? Because I was afraid that they were going to say, you know, you know, you're a pufter, you know. I'm afraid of the police. Lesbians face no threat from the law. They've always been permitted to love as they please. Stray dags are an all-lesbian band. They play at regular gay dances in one of Sydney's town halls. No one knows why we legislate against gay men, but not against gay women. Queen Victoria is supposed to have said that there was no need for a law against lesbianism because it was physically impossible for one woman to have sex with another. Legal they may be, but when a woman first discovers that she's attracted to other women, she faces the same trauma as a man does when it comes to telling the world that she's gay. For one girl, the worst part was facing her parents. I was extremely afraid of them finding out that I was a lesbian. I tried to keep it hidden. And um, that was impossible because I wanted to have an honest relationship with them too. And um, so then it, it came out that I was having a lesbian relationship with this other woman. And um, it was extremely difficult and frightening and painful. and. Um, uh, so, but I decided that being honest was more important than holding it back. In a Mr. and Mrs. Loftus, what did you feel when you made this discovery about your daughter? Well, for me, I felt very, uh, very distressed, very angry. Um, angry. Angry. Yeah. Angry with. Well, <laughs> my presupposition was that this other lady had. Um, seduced my daughter, had got my daughter into this frame, into this behaviour. It was an, an incredible shock. Um, and it was partly because the woman that Bim was involved with was quite a close friend of mine. She was a few years older than Bim. And I felt a tremendous sense of betrayal. I felt that this woman had betrayed me. Um, I can remember opening the door of a room down the hall in our house and seeing Mim kissing this other lady and think, oh, um, shock. Shock. Um, I knew that the other girl concerned was had been worried, had been crying, in fact. And I thought, oh, well, she's she's just comforting her, you know, that's that's okay. But that really wasn't the way it was, and I was really denying my perception of the whole situation. Do you still blame this friend? Do I blame? No, no, not at all. No, I. I Miriam has made it very clear that this was a mutual relationship between the two of them and that that was simply my, my wish at that time to protect myself from the, the pain of the whole thing. I don't blame her at all. 
How is it now between you all? Oh, great. Oh, it's really, it's really good between us all now. Um, but I think it took um, probably a year or two really to really go through um, the implications, what it meant for each of us. More than that. Probably more than, maybe, maybe three years, a couple of years, something like that. Very few parents would be happy at finding their son or daughter was gay. It's a hard road to travel. How would a parent who believes it's right to send homosexuals to prison handle such a crisis? Mr Cameron, you have a family of eight. Now, statistics say that one person in ten is probably homosexual. How would you react if a boy of yours turns out to be gay? Well, I would face up to it um, um, with, I hope, sensitivity. Uh, it would be absolutely wrong of me as a parent and as a Christian, if I didn't, um, you love the sinner, but that doesn't mean that you should love the sin. In fact, you should oppose and try to contain the sin. If it should happen in your family, would you be prepared to tell a son of yours that he must repress his sexuality for life? I would urge him very, very strongly to try and contain it, to seek therapy, to reverse it. I don't regard it as irreversible at all. But the gay's experience is that it's only when they stop trying to repress themselves that they can feel whole. Three and a half years ago, you decided to come right out. Yeah, that was... What's the difference? Oh, much more relaxed. Much more relaxed. Much more relaxed with, with everybody. I'm not afraid of the education department seeking me, for instance. Um, I'm not afraid of doing an interview like this. I'm not afraid of people being able to identify me as a homosexual. Are you a happy man? Uh, extremely. I'm probably a very intense man, otherwise I wouldn't be involved in things like competitive weightlifting and, uh, and bodybuilding, but a happy and fulfilled person, yes. I think one has to have a lot of um, confidence and courage and pride to, to, to really be upfront and to be strong in who you are with your own sexuality and your own um, identity. Is there any chance of some super sensitive Prince Charming coming along one day? No chance at all, no, no chance at all of any super sensitive Prince Charming coming along, no. The idea that people can be proud to be gay has only emerged after centuries among the despised and persecuted minorities. Walking all alone With a flag held high Underneath the pink triangle where we spent the night <laughs> underneath the pink triangle held each other tight <laughs> we both agreed that love is just a misplaced trust so swore ourselves to everlasting lust underneath the pink triangle and the stars above two three four oh, oh the pink triangle proud to be gay and cheeky too will they win friends and influence australia In most of the country, the law treats gays as criminals. In the last seven years, the Australian Capital Territory has decided that they're not. And so has Victoria, and so has South Australia. South Australia was the first state to end prosecution of gays. The Premier at the time, Don Dunstan, gave the change his backing, though others saw it as a disgrace to the nation. And now he's campaigning for the gays in Sydney and launching a gay rights book. I believe that it is time that the legislators in this state faced the facts which are set out in the book. And you know, there are only two basic excuses used, apart from personal prejudice, by the opponents of a homosexual law reform measure. One refers to various texts in the Bible. The other excuse, of course, is that somehow or other, homosexuality is unnatural. In the natural order of things, sex is very far from fully understood. Is the urge which has driven apparently respectable men to risk disgrace in public lavatories more or less unnatural than the urge which makes a spider risk death in a lethal embrace? is the urge which quite frequently makes male monkeys mount each other, the same urge that drives gays.
whatever creatures do sexually must be natural to them. And the majority of psychiatrists believe at the moment that homosexuality is natural in man, not a perversion. They also believe that whatever your sex urge tells you to do, you're going to want to do. You may resist it, but you can't change it, and you can't extinguish it. Whosoever commits the abominable act of buggery with mankind shall be liable to penal servitude for 14 years. Whosoever attempts to commit the said abominable crime with any person or without the consent of such person shall be liable to penal servitude for five years. The maximum sentence for the homosexual act between consenting adults is double the maximum sentence for heterosexual rape. About 145 homosexuals are prosecuted each year in New South Wales, and 20 go to prison, the majority of them for between two and five years. The gays object to a law which sees them as twice as dangerous as rapists, and they object too to politicians who ignore the facts of their case. This is the Sydney suburb of Blacktown. The gays have come here because the local MP, John Aquilina, has claimed in the Daily Mirror that Blacktown people don't want the law changed, and neither do people in the state in general. It shows that other people care about an issue of justice which uh, really everyone in society should be aware of. Blacktown, because the uh, Member of Parliament here yeah. feels that homosexuals don't exist in Blacktown. <laughs> to show that people care. That Thank you very much. Thank you. We're a very unusual site, people who are standing up and saying we are gay. I think because it's unusual, they have to think about it for a while. Uh, but I'm talking to people, when they stop, then their reaction becomes quite warm and quite friendly when they understand that you're human beings and not something that is somehow strange from an alien planet. When you've got their signatures on your petition, what are you going to do with it? We want to present it to John Aquilina and say to him, you wrote in the mirror that gay rights has no support at all in Blacktown. Here we are with people who've signed the petition. What do you say now? Got 132 signatures, 117 which came from this area. So I just want okay, to present well, that to I'm you. I'm pleased to receive the petition on your behalf and I'll be presenting it to the Speaker of the Legislative Assembly. Well, I do wish to make it quite plain that the fact that I received this petition doesn't necessarily mean that I agree with any of the points of view expressed in it. But nonetheless, I, I am duty bound to receive it and I will uh, in duty present it to the Speaker and uh, I hope you people uh, feel that by doing that, that you know, your cause is going to be satisfied as far as my particular electorate is concerned. That's true. The point yes. was that I've got opinion polls for 15 years now that say that there's overwhelming majority support in this state for reform. Um, and we'd like you to know that because, I mean, your article was not based on the, those facts. Your article was saying I mean, there wasn't in any... I mean, even in South Australia... Okay, well, was I've a... received a petition, I think, when you call it. But nothing more. Okay. But you've already printed no. the question. You've well, already made public... I mean, I don't think this is an unreasonable question we should be allowed to ask you. That, you know, that there is a difference between what happens or what you perceive as happening in your electorate and what is happening elsewhere in Australia and is showing up in opinion polls. There are other representations I made in relation to what I perceive in my electorate. But, but you've talked sorry, about a majority opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. In rejecting gays, he's in line with about 40% of people, according to opinion polls. And there are aspects of gay life which a lot of people find hard to take. Gays would call this a cottage in England or a tea room in America. Not everyone who uses it is gay, but many gays cruise certain public lavatories for instant anonymous sex. Kinsey found that 52% were bisexual married men. It's risky, the police may be lurking, but some gays have had as many as 2,000 encounters in lavatories. What do you get out of it? Um, well, in my case, a sense of adventure. Um, when you used one, did you make any emotional contact with your partner? 
Not usually, that's almost against the rules. They're usually anonymous, casual, uh, almost no words are spoken, if any, uh, and there's usually no affection shown. It seems both incredibly promiscuous and incredibly sordid. Well, on the subject of promiscuity, I'm always reminded of Kinsey's definition of promiscuity. He said the only way he could define a promiscuous person was somebody who was having more sex than he was getting. I don't know how we define how much is too much sex. If I choose to have a lot of sex, I, I think that's my business. Now, these lavatories are public lavatories paid for by public money. I went into that one. I, I didn't like what I saw. Do you think I should be exposed to that on public money? I'd have several thoughts on that. One is that um, uh, people tend to see what they go looking for, and you had a, a different reason for most, perhaps for, for noticing what was going on. Um, so do the police who go in and, and they notice what's going on. Well, let me put it to you this way. What I saw was a young man sitting on the lavatory with the door open, looking at me. And what was so shocking about that? The fact that he had the door open the way he looked at me as well. And you haven't seen men undressed or exposing themselves before. I of course, think it's I, a, of course yes. I have, but I don't expect to see that in a public lavatory. I think it's a, a rather sad commentary on our society that people are shocked by public nudity or by uh, a public display of sexuality. I'm not shocked if I see heterosexual couples in the park doing things which are very, very blatantly sexual. Why should you or any other man be shocked simply because you see two men or some, some man making an approach. I don't know why, but I must tell you that I am. And I think a great many people feel the same. Well, I think that's your problem. A friend of mine who is very aware of the significance public toilets have to many gays in the early stages of coming out, a man who came from the country and had no other source of contact, says that we should claim these places as sacred sites. Gays may yearn for lasting relationships, but promiscuity is so much a part of the gay world that it's difficult. The Metropolitan Community Church in Sydney is prepared to help. We have gathered here this afternoon as friends and family of Stephen and Michael. They've honoured us by choosing us to share with them their great joy as they participate in the ceremony which will unite them in the Holy Union. A ceremony of two people joining in commitment to... The couple must have lived together for a year and they must have discussed the promise they're making with the minister. ...friends celebrating a very special kind of love. Stephen, would you please place Michael in? Do you, Michael, promise from this day forward that Stephen will be your spouse and that you will stand with him and that you will pledge to him your respect and your love? I do. Will you then repeat after me, Stephen, saying to Michael, Michael, I take you as my spouse. Michael, I take you as my spouse. I pledge to share my life. I pledge to share my life. Openly with you. Openly with you. To speak the truth to, to speak you. To speak the truth to you. In love. In love. I promise to honor. I promise to honor. And tenderly care for you. And tenderly care for you. To cherish. To cherish. And encourage. And encourage. Your own fulfillment. And your own fulfillment. A blessing from as the Metropolitan Church. Church, but ironically, it's because some gays want a right to a form of marriage, even to adopt children, that another church refuses to support any change at all of the laws against them. The Roman Catholic Church did support reforms in England and in two states of Australia. It argued there that consenting adults should not be liable to imprisonment. But in Sydney, it argues differently. Well, uh, I have to keep insisting that the situation has changed. What is being urged is that homosexuality be accepted as an alternative lifestyle and that the general character of Australian and New South Wales society be changed and that one uh, allow homosexual marriages and that one allow homosexuals to adopt children and so on. Now, the, the Catholic before, Church... we consider, before we consider going that far, can you just answer whether or not the church would support legalizing sex between consenting adults homosexuals the answer the answer cannot be given except in the context if it were merely a case of what was being argued in the united kingdom some years back
the church would give the same man as it gave there. But the situation is not the same. And Cardinal Freeman uh, has argued correctly that in this present situation, we cannot back a change in the law, which uh, entails a great deal of other things which we cannot support. What would you say about a church that would offer a marriage ceremony for homosexuals? Well, um, one, one could only um, question the theology, I think, for a start. Uh, I'd like to know how they're related to uh, scripture, tradition, and so on. And uh, I know this sort of thing is going on, but um, it's the usual unfortunate confusion of compassion uh, with uh, correct thinking. And I think churches like that have let their heart carry their heads away. Placed your love before God and before each other, your friends, your family, and your pastor, given and received vows and rings, and shared a communion together, I then now pronounce that you are joined together in a holy union. Those whom God joins, may their union ever be fulfilled. And now may your lives find an ever-increasing joy and blessedness. May your hearts and lives be filled with the grace and true affection of a happy holy union. In the name of the Creator, and the Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may embrace each other. <laughs> they have the blessing of their church, but to the Catholic Church, this would be anathema. For the Catholics, Gay Sydney has gone far enough. Uh, the gay liberation movement has gone out on a limb in order to achieve a great deal in a hurry, uh, indeed to change the character of Australian society, and that is something that we just cannot back. It's as fundamental as that? You see a threat to Australian society? Yes. No compromise from the Catholics, no quitting from the gays. They feel that the Catholic influence is one of their main obstacles. What is it that you feel you're really up against in the state parliament? Well, we're up against the conservative forces, the ultra-conservative forces within the, the state parliament, consisting mainly of older MPs, but MPs, of course, who um, have strong religious convictions. They're angry at a Labour Party which won't relax the laws against them, and they think the Premier could swing it if he wanted to. What do you say, Mr. Ram? I'll get off his backside and, and bloody well help. I mean, it's, 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 it's up to him. I mean, he, if he put his personal stamp on legislation which would bring about equality of gay people in the state, then we'd get somewhere. Um, instead of being wishy-washy and sitting back and sort of, you know, with his record majority and not wanting to do anything with that majority. Oh, we want our freedom to do as we like. We don't want to be molested, we don't want to be contested, we don't want to be arrested, we just want our rights. Oh, we want our freedom, oh, we want our freedom. Oh, we um, want the space with the traffic coming along, so we'd rather get a you know, walk up and without any worries. I don't know where they are at this stage, so I haven't seen them around. Contented people don't go on protest marches. They're one-tenth of the population and they want acceptance from the other nine-tenths. That may be a long way off, but they've come a long way already. With the law against them, they've managed to make Sydney into one of the gay cities of the world.